the time, it seemed like the greatest idea I'd ever conceived. I knew right away who I wanted to enlist in aiding me in my plan. They were key to helping me pull it off. It was only a matter of convincing them. First, there was a protector of the town of Loddington, Sheriff Whitehorn, and Artie Brock, the third generation of a family-run funeral parlor in Loddington. So let me get this straight. You called us out here because you want us to help you fake your own death. Why in the world would you want to do something like that? I mean, hasn't everyone at one point or another in their lives wondered what people would say at their funeral? I mean, I'm editor-in-chief of the Loddington Daily here. I'm a, I'm a prominent person here in town. I've always... people would say when I've passed. I mean, I'm a big person here. I bet they say wonderful things about me. I think the whole town's going to be a buzz. Have you even considered the ethical ramifications of what you've just proposed? Why would you want to put your friends and family through the grief of thinking that you're dead? As a funeral director, I see the pain that people go through every single day. And that's why you're a funeral director. You're negative. I'm going to turn it around. Think about how happy they and the entire town are going to be when they find out I'm alive. That's actually where you two come in. I'm going to need a little help from you guys. You're going to discover a body that's drowned. You're going to identify the body, and it's going to be me. How are you going to get around your wife wanting to see your dead body? Mrs. Bryant has never laid eyes on a corpse. She doesn't like to look at my body now. Why would she want to see me dead? And you, Mr. Funeral Director, I need your help, too. I want you to have a funeral for me. Get a casket. Weight it down. And when the news of my death reaches this newspaper office, the whole town is going to go like a wildfire. I'm not going to have anything to do with this. I'm with Artie on this one. You realize what serious hot water we could get in for this? And I thought you might be a little bit of a problem, Sheriff. So it's a real shame, Sheriff, that I'm going to have to print a paper in the morning. It's going to have a newspaper article about... Uh, a fundraiser for a sheriff's department. And all the money went to a soda and a candy vending machine. Oh, the shame. Sheriff. And okay. you, Mr. Funeral Director. I seem to remember that you lost Mr. Loving's ashes and you gave his grieving wife an urn filled with ashes from your fireplace. You said you wouldn't tell anyone about that. I know, but that's why I need both of your help now. So it's kind of blackmail then? Yes. Two weeks passed and the plan had seemingly been pulled off without a hitch. Looking back now, I don't see how I could have been so selfish. Good afternoon, sir. I'm glad you could make it. We did it. We did it, Artie. <clears throat> It'll be refreshing to read some real news in the paper now. Uh, I'd certainly be willing to take the paper again. Hmm. Didn't you ever get the feeling that his articles benefited him in some way? Oh, absolutely. It was always pure gossip about others. Can you believe these people? They don't even care what I've done for the town. It's just like a social event or something to them. Do you 
find it unfair or even untrue, considering that you were blackmailing us just a couple of weeks ago to help you with your brilliant plan? It's your funeral, Louis. You wanted to know what everyone thought about you. Excuse me, everyone. I just wanted to thank you all for being here today. I know that many of you are here because my husband was somewhat infamous here in Loddington. I certainly don't deny the fact that he was a difficult man to get along with. He made his living reporting on the lives of others, many of whom are here today. But he was my husband. And I regret now not being closer to him. I wish that I could turn back the hands of time to before all those late nights he worked. All those silent dinners. All those petty little arguments. And just start over. Somehow I think that if I had meddled more in my marriage to try to fix the problems, then he would never have meddled in all of your affairs. Are you happy now? I have to go to the cemetery and see about your grave. Now here I sit after attending my own funeral. This whole idea was to bask in the glory of my success in life, but all that success means absolutely nothing now that I know how people feel about me. I've messed up big time, not just in carrying out this silly plan of mine, but my whole life. I've been so wrong to people, especially my wife. My wife? Of course. Wake up, Lewis. How is this for a headline? You're not dead. I have the opportunity that a lot of people do not get to make before it's too late. Making amends. And I'll start with my wife. <laughs>